Chair recognizes that the Lenore County Board of Education has established a quorum and calls the July 12, 2021 regular board meeting to order. Chair recognizes Mr. Nick Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray. May the words spoken in this room tonight be beneficial to the students, parents, and staff, and administrators in our school system. And may we be led by the guiding principle to always base our decisions on the best interest of our young people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Chair recognizes Mr. Brent Williams to present the agenda for tonight's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, tonight it's uh, my honor and privilege to present to you for your consideration and hopefully your approval tonight's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to the agenda? So move to approve the agenda. All right, we got a motion by Mr. Woods. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Outlaw. We got a motion by Mr. Woods and a second by Dr. Outlaw to approve the board agenda as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor of the motion, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Yeah. Okay, uh, Carolyn, do we do we need to ask Marlon to we verbally? To yes, we need yes. to verbally. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we've got six right hands and one yes. Mm -hmm. All right, motion carries. Okay, I do have a few comments I'd like to make tonight. First of all, I'd like to let everyone know that Mr. Smith couldn't be with us tonight, so he is joining us via Zoom. And uh, I think this will be the first time we've attempted something like this, so hopefully things will go well. We, the board, would like to continue to thank all the staff and employees, regardless of job description, of the Lenore County Public School System for the outstanding commitment, dedication, and hard work that has gone into making the students of Lenore County Public Schools as successful as possible under the extraordinary circumstances that has existed the last 15 months. We would also like to congratulate the students, teachers, staff, and schools for continuing to excel in the areas of grant writing, student recognition and awards, and staff recognition and awards. We would also like to thank our community business partners for providing opportunities for our students to be successful in their careers. And we would also like to thank all students, parents, teachers, and staff for making the Summer Learning Academy program a success this summer. That concludes my comments. And now, Chair recognizes Mr. Williams for his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, July is a busy month in our schools. Um, our Summer Learning uh, program, our Summer Enrichment program is going very, very well. Um, we have a very, compared to, to many districts, we have a very high percentage of our students in uh, summer learning, uh, Ms. Herring, and uh, Mr. Harvey and I will give you some additional information about that later. But I want to thank, at this point, to thank all of the teachers, um, the students, uh, the other staff members, administrators, everybody, including our parents, everybody who's worked so hard to make our summer enrichment academy successful. Um, a lot of learning going on and everybody's working hard uh, to make it the best that it that can be and we feel very good about the learning that's happening every day in our schools. Um, <clears throat> our um, teachers are continuing in the summer as they did all year to uh, push forward to write uh, mini grant proposals and to work on even larger grants as well. And tonight I'm pleased to share with you uh, some of those details about some of our teachers and some of our students who've excelled and been recognized at um, the regional and state level. Uh, first, Ms. Monica Willis, um, who is an employee and a coordinator in our child nutrition department, was recognized at their state conference last week. Um, she's been with us a year and a half, came to us from Pitt County, and she was recognized with the Martha Gomer Spirit Award 
at the State Convention of the School Nutrition Association last week in Greensboro. This award honors a school nutrition supervisor who demonstrates a strong commitment to the school nutrition program, to the students who will ultimately benefit from the program through an infectious enthusiasm and a can-do attitude, a spirit of service to the program and to the School Nutrition Association. Tonight, we want to say congratulations to Ms. Willis and thank her for what, uh, for her hard work and her dedication. And Ms. Danielle Smith is here. Ms. Smith, congratulations to you and to, to the department as well for all of your hard work in um, feeding our, our students and our staff members every day and just making it happen with um, unusual and, and increasingly difficult circumstances. We appreciate you and Ms. Willis and so many of our school nutrition employees and others who are doing a great job every day. Uh, more congratulations are in order for Northeast Elementary School, which recently won a $28,000 grant from NC Green Power to bring an educational solar array to the school. Now Northeast has been named a 2021 Imagine Nation, Imagine Nation Beacon School for above and beyond enthusiasm and innovation, innovative use of Imagine Learning tools. So congratulations to Mr. Kerman and the team of Northeast Elementary School. Congratulations to two of our students, Emma Rayner and Rachel Noble, South Lenore High School FFA officers who have been accepted to serve as student leaders in the North Carolina State University and the Center for Environmental Farming Systems. Selected students across the state will serve as members of collaborative design teams charged with creating health and wellness campaigns as well as evaluating and improving North Carolina farm to school initiatives. Each member will receive a $200 honorarium to be used for future scholarships. We're proud of these students for their willingness to serve. Kenston High School is one of 205 schools nationwide to receive a $5,000 grant from the Laura Bush Foundation for America's Libraries. Congratulations to Kenston High School, to Ms. Bryant, principal over there, and to our media coordinator at Kenston High School, Ms. Sarah Levin. Great job. A sidewalk chalk drawing by Pink Hill Elementary School student Leah Falk won second place in the Woodman Life Patriotic Chalk Contest and National Online Competition. Leah will receive a check for $300 and the school will receive a check for $300 as well. Pink Hill teacher Ms. Brenda Griffin entered Leah to represent her school. So congratulations to Ms. Leanne Hardy, the team at Pink Hill Elementary School, uh, to Leah Falk, to her parents and to Ms. Brenda Griffin who entered on her behalf. So, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. I'm proud of our teachers. I'm proud of our administrators, our students. I thank our parents and the community for supporting our summer efforts. And as you can see, our um, employees, our teachers and others are going onward and upward every day and continuing to push forward and try to get additional opportunities for our students. So that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Williams? Okay, I'd like to make a comment. As I have said time and time again, we have a lot of positives going on in the Lenore County Public School Systems involving our students, teachers, staff, and our schools. Thank you, Mr. Williams, for your report. Ms. Taylor, has anybody signed up for public comment? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we have Mr. Jonathan Britt who has joined us tonight and who would like to make uh, public comment. Thank you, Mr. Britt, for joining us. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Jonathan Britt, parent of two LCPS students. I'm here to suggest action by this board to remove the mask requirement <clears throat> and to ban critical race theory from being taught in our schools. During last month's meeting, it was stated that the board is following state requirements on masks. Following state requirements is harming our children. A recent study published by the Journal of the American Medical Association Network measured carbon dioxide in inhaled air under children's masks at six times higher than what is already deemed unacceptable. This was after just three minutes of measurement. They conclude that there is a concern of mask wearing causing a buildup of CO2 in the bloodstream and as such children should not be forced to wear masks. This research supports what we already know in terms of side effects from mask wearing which include irritability, headache, difficulty concentrating, less happiness, reluctance to go to school, malaise, impaired learning, and drowsiness or fatigue. 
Aside from the negative health impacts of masks, they are also ineffective against COVID-19 spread. The National COVID-19 School Response Dashboard shows that the number of cases reported in North Carolina schools requiring masks is higher than in schools without mask requirements, regardless of community transmission rates. I've sent you this information. While the CDC continues to advocate for wearing masks, they cite no evidence supporting their effectiveness. It's time to make decisions based on real data and act in the best interest of our children's health. On critical race theory, I would hope the board would reject racist indoctrination in any form, but considering your white staff members were subjected to racial bullying <coughs> by way of last year's diversity training, there's a cause for concern. And there are already indications that CRT is being quietly infused into next year's curriculum. Martin Luther King Jr.'s hope that his children would be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character remains what society should strive toward and is the practical definition of not being racist. Critical race theory ingrains the belief that the content of a person's character is the color of their skin. And it is used to justify the insistence that the United States is inherently evil. This is patently anti-American. This board is elected to represent the citizens of Lenore County, not the state or the NEA or the CDC. The board should be pressing the state on the child health issues caused by masking and remove them from our children's spaces. CRT will do nothing to advance the education of our children or to unite our community. CRT is racism, and this board should take action to prevent it from being taught in our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Britt. And as always, we'd like to thank our public for their time, interest, and comments pertaining to the North County Public School System. All right, now we'll move to the presentation portion of the agenda. Chair recognizes Mr. Brent Williams, Mrs. Francis Harry, and Mr. Nick Harvey to provide a summary of the implementation of Plan A during the summer in Richmond Academy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as has been our practice over the last several months, we will continue to provide you with a summary of our instructional efforts uh, through the lens of the Summer Enrichment Academy. Mrs. Um, Herring will uh, present a summary of our instructional efforts and Mr. Harvey will present a snapshot uh, summary of the operational aspects of um, our summer learning program. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Chairman Hill and all board members here this evening. I'm pleased to report the progress being made during our Summer Enrichment Academies. We only have two weeks left of Summer Enrichment Academies. Next Thursday, July 22nd is the last day. Overall, we are averaging 2,125 students a day. This number does fluctuate some, but our site administrators report that students are attending on a regular basis. Uh, one of, um, of the students attending, 638 of them are EC students, and 377 are identified as English learners. Um, and as you know, we usually have a separate camp for our EL and migrant population. Uh, it's usually held at Pink Hill, but this summer we folded their experience um, and services into our summer enrichment activity academy. So we have approximately 1,200 elementary students attending daily. They are receiving intensive differentiated reading, math, and hands-on science instruction on a daily basis. We have teacher and counselor-led social and emotional lessons occurring every day, in addition to art classes and music classes and PE and STEM classes. Teachers are, um, our elementary teachers are completing multiple running records on students to track progress in their fluency and comprehension skills. And these running records will be sent back to each school, student's home school for their new teachers to plan for comprehensive support for them. In our middle schools, the average daily attendance is around 350 uh, total uh, across all three sites. They have weekly club activities in middle school uh, with basketball, sewing. Um, our students, of course, in middle school have the same math, reading, and science instruction every day in addition to art and music and daily PE. And they also have a daily social and emotional component um, in, their, in their schedule. 
Our high schools have approximately 375 students attending at the three sites and the students are busy earning grade replacements for classes they either failed or earned a grade that is, has negatively impacted their GPA. And some high school students are earning first time credits in career management or through the North Carolina Virtual Public High School. Other students are completing modules for credit recovery courses, which will allow them to remain on track for graduation with their cohort. And students who are not proficient on an end of course assessment um, at the high schools are retaking the EOC at the end of this session, so next week, for an opportunity to replace the original score. And the highest attempt uh, is the one that remains on the transcript. So it's a great opportunity for our high school kids. In addition, our high school students are enjoying classes in art, music, career and technical education, and physical um, education and PE. At the end of the summer, we will be able to report to you the number of credits earned by high school students this summer. All of our students, Ellery Midland High School, are preparing to take the MAP screener assessment as a measure of growth during our summer learning experience next week. And so that will give us a measure. They, they, we took the third nine weeks MAPS um, score and we're giving it to them again at the end of the summer enrichment. And so we'll have those two data points and we'll be able to measure growth and, um, and, and activity, positive activity, that's what we're hoping. Um, and then we'll have that piece of data that we can send to this children's homeschool um, as we plan what their comprehensive support and wraparound services are going to be um, starting in the fall. So if you don't have any questions, this does conclude my portion of the report. Mr. Yeah, thank you, leaving board members. Uh, as Ms. Heron and Mr. Williams indicated, we are very pleased with the amount of participating students in our summer enrichment program. Our operation department has assisted with feeding, feeding our students, transporting 90% of the 2,100 students that are participating, uh, transporting them to and from school, and ensuring that our buildings are conducive for learning. Uh, we have received several questions regarding the new CDC guidance that was published over the weekend regarding the wearing of masks. We are anxiously awaiting an updated version of the NC Toolkit for safer schools. Once the toolkit is updated, and we anticipate that to be updated once the governor's order expires, uh, and we will notify the board of that change of the wearing of masks protocol. Additionally, those schools that are being utilized for summer learning sites will be ready to receive their traditional students this fall. All floors will be stripped and waxed, and buildings will be cleaned and sanitized. Finally, uh, COVID-19 testing uh, is continue, uh, has continued to be available for, as needed for staff and students and will continue in the fall. Uh, another shout out to Ms. Uh, Smith and Mr. Mitchell. Uh, our child nutrition department and our transportation department assist our Lenore County Parks and Rec um, with the transporting of their summer programs to and from our sites for summer feeding. So not only are we feeding our students that are enrolled in our summer enrichment programs, we also feed students that are participating in the Parks and Rec summer camp. So a shout out to Ms. Smith and Mr. Mitchell for facilitating that as well. So uh, our operational team is busy at work in the summer, preparing for our students in the fall uh, while uh, facilitating students right now in our summer learning program. I entertain any questions that you may have regarding the operation. Okay, any questions or comments from Mr. Williams, Mrs. Harry, and Mr. Hart? Okay, thank you, Mr. Williams, Mrs. Harry, and Mr. Hart for the update. Next, the chair recognizes Mrs. Amy Jones to provide an update on the Lenore County Public School Work Based Learning Partnership. Good evening. As soon as, I, as soon as boardroom pops up on my display, I will have that up for you. All right, good evening. It's my pleasure to share with you tonight an update on our LCPS and industry partnerships. Um, we've had a busy time this spring and we're real excited about what's going on for our students. So I'll begin with our Crown LCPS partnership. 
So we've had some success with our Crown Youth Apprentices, and I'd like to start with our class of 2020. Um, our students in 2020 started in January, and then of course the pandemic shut everything down, and the students were unable to attend their apprenticeship sessions at Crown. As soon as Crown was able to open back up, those students had graduated from high school, and all of the students were offered full-time employment with Crown as promised by that industry partner. Um, all of those students accepted their full-time employment with Crown, and all have now become eligible for the Crown educational benefit. So we are so excited. That is a 100% success rate for our first class of apprentices um, with Crown. All are receiving the educational benefit and all have the opportunity to sign up for coursework um, through the post-secondary institution of their choice, whether it's LCC, a four-year college, or another community college. So we are so excited for those three young men um, that started the program for us in 2020. We are very excited that we have four new youth apprentices in 2021. And those students are Austin Reibenbark, Elijah Stroud, Gavin Pitt Pittman, and Connor McIntosh. Um, so what does this mean for our new youth apprentices? They have a 20 hour work week. Um, they have flexible scheduling. They're working all summer. Um, but they're working with them. If they have a vacation planned or if they have some family things that they need to do, um, the company is more than willing to work with them so that they can accommodate those needs. In the fall, um, they will be able to take a combination of Lenore Community College and Lenore County Public Schools coursework. Um, we do have one of our apprentices who graduated in the class of 2021, and we were very excited. We were able to get him as a registered apprentice prior to graduation so that he receives the full benefit of the apprenticeship program. Our other three students are rising seniors at their high school, and so they'll be finishing out their high school coursework as well as their LCC coursework. So what's really great about this is once students graduate, um, they can continue in the apprenticeship program or they can choose to become a full-time employee at Crown and that will afford them the full educational benefit. So it's a win-win for students either way. They can either continue in the apprenticeship program and access free coursework that way or they can use the educational benefit provided through that um, corporation company. And the picture down here at the bottom of the slide um, was the day that they awarded those apprenticeships to those students. It was a great day. They took us over to the training center and you can see the four young men wearing ball caps in the middle. Um, we had a good crowd of us here from Lenore County Public Schools representing and then also um, the leadership from Crown, Todd Freidiger, the plant manager is the um, gentleman in the corner and he's addressing the crowd in this photo. So this has just been a wonderful opportunity for our students and we're so proud of this. Um, we're so proud of this partnership. It's truly been incredible for our kids. On top of um, the apprenticeship positions, Crown also offered employment, um, temporary employment for our recent graduates. They've hired seven of our students to work over the summer. And what does that mean for those students? It's a temporary employment. It's a great summer job. They pay them above minimum wage. They have flexible scheduling. And then Crown does offer them the potential for continued employment in the fall. And I thought this was a neat fact. We have one of our young ladies who took one of those jobs started on the same day that her dad started a job at Crown as well. So they started together. That was pretty cool. Um, but this has been such a benefit to our community, our school community. Um, they're working with our students. They want our students. Um, we've started another partnership between Crown and one of our high schools where they're going to be working with our ag mechanics to retool some of that curriculum so it's more relevant um, for the workplace as well. So it's just been great all the way around. Our Spirit LCPS partnership. Prior to the pandemic, Spirit <coughs> offered um, Kinston High School a considerable, considerable amount of grant money. Um, and then the progress stalled again due to the pandemic. Well, I am happy to report um, that that grant has resumed and Kinston High School has ordered furniture to create some flexible learning spaces in their beautiful media center space. That will include small group and large group meeting areas for students and staff. It will include student advising areas and also some opportunities for student career exploration due to the reconfiguration of the space. And you can see some of the furniture here as an example of the types of things that will be um, located in the Kinston High School Library. So our partnership with Spirit continues to grow um, and be of benefit to our school. They're very invested in working with our schools. And then a little heads up, um, we are working on a Chick-fil-A LCPS partnership. As you know, Chick-fil-A has long been a community supporter of our school system. Um, we have many of our students who actually work at Chick-fil-A. Uh, it's their pleasure to serve you. So, 
Um, but we'd like to announce that coming soon we have a new venture for traditional high school and early college students and details will be coming soon. But um, the foundation of that is going to be some leadership and growth opportunities for our students here in the school system in partnership with Chick-fil-A. And those students will be coming together across all of those high schools um, to work in that cohort together to build some leadership skills and some opportunities for them as well. So we're very excited about this partnership. I'm sure I'll be back to tell you more about it once we have all the details firmed up. Do you have any questions for me that I can answer for you this evening? Okay, any questions or comments for Mrs. Jones? Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones, for the update. Thank you. And uh, I would like to say that I think these partnerships offer opportunities to the students of Lenore County Public School System to help them further their careers and also as opportunities that I don't think, I don't think that students in other districts have. I agree. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Chair recognizes Mr. Nick Harvey and Ms. Danielle Smith to present the child nutrition vendor information for the 2021-2022 school year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Smith will present, uh, as you stated, the information about the event uh, for the vendors for the 2021-2022 school year. As you know, they're in a consortium with other uh, surrounding districts that enables our prices to be reduced uh, more so than it would be if we went in. Good evening. Um, so one of the things that we do every four years, um, we would have done this last year, but the pandemic came, so they gave us another year to stick with our prices. But this year we had to bid out our prices, bid out our food. Um, so I have sent in the, the lots to you all, the, with the bid opening results, so I will go over them um, with you all. But what we did is... Um, with the food supplies and produce we are in with four other counties the coastal coalition um, and like mr harvey said we bring in all these counties it drives down the prices of the food and it brings in more of an assortment so um so we did a bit a bid opening um lot one is food cisco was 2.1 million dollars um to two million one hundred and eighty four thousand u.s foods decided not to bid so cisco was awarded the bid Lot three is supplies. Cisco was $287,126.98. U.S. Foods decided not to bid, so the bid was awarded to Cisco. Um, lot four was produce. Greenville Produce out of Greenville, North Carolina wanted to bid. They did bid $132,047.20. However, R&H Produce out of Raleigh came in at $115,209.95. So the bid was awarded to r &H Produce. Milk is a little different. Milk is a bottom line bid. Milk is kind of like produce that changes from, from time to time. So it can go a little high or it can go a little low. Um, but just like in the past, we have always signed a escalating and de-escalating clause in that if it goes high, then we might pay a little bit more, but we don't pay the highest price. Um, but if it goes low, we get the lower price. So it's kind of escalating, de-escalating. Um, so the Dairy Farmers of, Mark, of America, who is Pet Dairy, did um, bid with us. And um, Marva Made Dairy, which is Mayola, ended up getting it with 1,111,000 versus 1,133,000 with um, Pet Dairy. Um, so the bid is awarded to Mayola. Hershey ice cream turned in a bottom line. We gave them certain products that we always are pretty popular. Um, and then they bid on that. Um, however, Pet Dairy decided not to bid. We have done business with Hershey ice cream for many years. We have had no issues with them and they have served several counties. So we, um, so the bid was awarded to Hershey ice cream. Um, uniform tops, the staff has already received uniform tops for this past year, so none will be or ordered as a whole, which is quite a bit of money. So we are not ordering that this year. We are not going um, down that road. So chemicals, Cisco is the one that was the food bid. Um, they also have chemicals. So we were going with Correction Enterprise, but we found that we were able to beat those prices with Cisco. So that way our managers can just do one whole food order with chemicals on it, make it simple, but also save us quite a bit of money um, through that. Um, office supplies, 
we do a price analysis every year where we can we take our main five items like copy and paper pens um, etc and we compare them out and quill came out on top this year so we will be going through quill smart mouth pizza is in our high schools they love it um, and we have had a contract with them in a bid and they have decided that they would like to roll over the bid with us and we want to do that because our students love their their food um, so we will continue with them now all of these bids we do have a chance to roll over with them for the next four years so that is a great thing so Cisco um, Mayola R&H produce we can roll over after this every year for four more years before we have to do all of this all over again so um, from a business perspective, you know, we're looking to save money, but we also understand that we have good products out there as well. But the Coastal Coalition has been really great. Um, we have five counties and that come together and it has really helped a lot to bring in, especially for the smaller counties that now have ice cream and other products that they wouldn't have if they weren't with us. So, okay. Any questions for Mr. Harvey or Ms. Smith? Yeah, one thing for Smith. <laughs> I have a question for Ms. Smith. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> How much of an increase do you see in uh, food prices coming? How much do I see are coming? Yeah. 10%, 15? Probably about 10%. That's why it's important to bid out your food because um, you know when you compare prices especially like produce produce is changing all the time and so it goes up and it comes down and it goes up and it comes down so it's really important to make sure that you bid out so that so that 10 percent is kind of embedded into the figures yes, that sir. you're giving yes sir thanks yes sir any further questions Mr. yes sir i just like to say this Ms. Smith, we haven't seen you in a while. I know. I'm so happy to see you. I actually passed you on Vernon one day. Did you? I waved. I don't think you recognized me. I probably me. didn't. I'm <laughs> sorry. I hadn't seen you. I'd just like to say thank you. Um, I remember March of 2020, sitting in the room over there, uh, in the war room, I believe y'all called it. And, and then just a few days later, um, I was speaking with some other board members, I believe in uh, Craven County. And, Pitt County, and not only was I very proud to say how quickly we were teaching and instruction had started, but we were also feeding very quickly as well. And Mr. Harvey was uh, giving us updates quite often on the numbers of meals that you and your staff were feeding uh, our community, our children. So I'd just like to say thank you for what you and your staff have done. Thank you. I'm very proud of all of my staff in child nutrition, and they have worked very hard, and I'm really proud to be a part of that. Mr. Williams speaks very highly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any more questions, comments? All right. Thank you, Mr. Harvey and Ms. Smith. And, and I'd like to just kind of piggyback on what Mr. King said. Uh, not only did our nutrition do an outstanding job in the department, but I think our entire school system did an outstanding job during COVID and, and having to uh, shoot from the hip a lot of times with an ever-changing uh, structure and model and, and not knowing from one day to the next what was expected of us. So I think the entire school system did an outstanding job. Okay, Chair recognizes Mrs. Heller Hooker to present the June 2021 financial report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The June 2021 financial report summarizes budget and year-to-date activity for all Lenore County Board of Education funds as of June 30, 2021. Additionally, the report presents the unadjusted local current fund um, expense fund balance as of June 30, 2021. If you've had time to review, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions for Mrs. Hooker? That's a good sign, Mrs. Hooker. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you for your report, Mrs. Hooker. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move to the action portion of the agenda. 
Chair recognizes Mrs. Julie Hill to present acceptable children contracts for the 2021-2022 school year. Good evening. Good evening. The Exceptional Children's Department requests approval for the three contracts provided to you for the 2021-2022 school year. I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Everybody have a chance to look over the contracts? Anybody have any questions for Mrs. Hill? Okay, hearing none, thank you Mrs. Hill. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to the exceptional children's contract for the 2021-2022 school year? So and we have a motion by Mr. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Davis. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Anderson and a second by Mr. Davis to approve the exceptional children's contract as presented. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, we will call for the vote. And uh, Mr. Smith, I will uh, ask for you to signify with a voice vote. But to start with, all in favor of the motion, signify by raising your right hand. All right, Mr. Smith? Yes. Okay, all opposed, like sign. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Hill. Thank you. Chair recognizes Mr. Nick Harvey to present surplus items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The attached items were submitted for your approval to be a surplus. The first item is uh, your blockers from Kenston High School. Second item, uh, the maintenance department has a pile of excess metal that needs to be removed as quickly as possible. And last, uh, South Monroe High School has modular trailers um, that Ms. Pierce and her team have requested to be removed and this will help our CTE program by providing more space for an additional greenhouse. For an additional greenhouse. And I'll talk some things about that and we'll be ready. Good. Any questions or comments from Mr. Harvey? I have a question. Yes, sir. What do we do with the metal? Sell it or? Well, typically, we go to Foss and, and the proceeds go back to the same yes. Okay. All right. Any further questions? I'm just going to comment. Looking at that sophomore module, I'm saying I think it's still standing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there a recommendation or a motion pertaining to surplus items? So, okay, scared me there for a second, Mr. Anderson. I thought you wanted to keep that thing. Right. <laughs> motion by Mr. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Davis. We have a motion by Mr. Anderson, a second by Mr. Davis to approve the surplus item as presented. Is there any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. Mr. Smith? Yes. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to closed session? Mr. Chairman, I move that the North Carolina Board of Education go into closed session on the North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11 to prevent the disclosure of confidential personnel files to consult with the board's attorney in order to preserve the attorney client privilege and to consider matters relating to the initial employment of an individual employee. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Anderson and a second by Mr. Davis to move to closed session. Closed session. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. Mr. Smith? Yes. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. We are now in closed session. Ready, sir. Ready. Okay. Chair recognizes that the Lenore County Board of Education is back in open session. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to personnel reports? Move to accept the person, personnel report and the addendum. Got a motion by Mr. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Got a second by Mr. Davis. We've got a motion by Mr. Anderson, a second by Mr. Davis to accept the monthly personnel report with the addendum as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Mr. Smith? Uh, yes. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Now is there a motion or recommendation pertaining to the summer school personnel? 
move to accept the summer school recommendation. Motion by Mr. Anderson, second. Second. Second by Mr. Davis. A motion by Mr. Anderson to second by Mr. Davis to accept the summer school personnel recommendations. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor of the motion to signify by raising your right hand. Mr. Smith? Yes. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. You don't need to make any announcement. Okay. With no further business to come before the board, is there a recommendation or motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Have a second. Motion by Mr. Anderson, second by Mr. Davis to adjourn the meeting. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Didn't think so. Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. Mr. Smith? Yes. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.